I'm Max Kaiser. Welcome to the Kaiser Report. Crash is the new black. You got your hack crashes, your gold crashes, your crash crashes. Crash is the new thing. It's the in thing. Stacy. Max, crash is so this season. You should try some. The first headline tweet from hacked AP Twitter account causes Dow to drop 150 points. Now, we all know this was uh, the AP tweeted out that the White House, there were two explosions at the White House and Obama was injured. In fact, it was a hacked AP Twitter account that sent this out. And then the headline from that reads, from a Twitter hack to the complete evaporation of all market liquidity in one chart. The chart here is from Nanex and it shows the, plun the 150 point plunge, but you see no liquidity. All right, well, that's, that's exactly right, Stacey Herbert, because these markets are essentially a hologram. They're a hologram that is concocted with algorithms that are injected into the protoplasm that is pseudo liquidity called New York Stock Exchange and all related contingencies, markets, tangential markets, derivative markets. And uh, it's riding on the edge of an event horizon called probability of 100% that this is going to blow. There is no underlying liquidity. People say derivatives add liquidity. That's a falsehood. People say market making, as iterated, by, as defined by Lloyd Blankfein or Jamie Dimon, that's a lie. These markets are nothing but a shadow of a shadow of a chimera of a hologram, and they're going to blow. And the other thing that CNBC noted here was that it's not so much that the computers initiated trades. What happened is that they canceled the orders, so the bids came out of the market. That caused the crash. And you see, when in that chart, there was zero volume, not a single participant. So it looked like genuinely 100% of the market is by algorithms who are reading Twitter, where half of the tweets are fake anyway, or hacked tweets. Well, the volume is fake. And I know from the technology I invented, the virtual specialist technology, that the shadow banking system that's run by Wall Street banks and the city of London banks, you put into the system, I call it the ghost trader. That's how it's defined in the patent. But they call it uh, shadow banking system. They just flood the, the, the market maker, the guy, the, the, the price discovery mechanism with 10, 20, 50, 100, 200 times normal daily volume as a way to create a price that you want. Remember, Goldman Sachs, they pick a price they want, and then they flood the market volume to get to that price. That's how they manipulate these markets. Now, when there's a rumor on Twitter, and suddenly the, the shadow banking system, or the ghost trader, as I defined it back in the early 90s, it simply cancels that side of the transaction, and you have the trap doors open. And I used to do this all the time. This is why um, in Hollywood, we had, I remember I had a discussion with Disney, for example. They were trying to get me to get the price of their movies at a certain level as part of their propaganda techniques. But here on Wall Street, you simply create prices that are part of an agenda, but has nothing to do with free market capitalism. It has nothing to do with price discovery. It has nothing to do with economics. This is Stalinism. This is, this is, this is Stalinism that's traded every single day, and it's called New York Stock Exchange. Well, speaking of Stalinism, let's move to the gold crash story. The headline from business insider's Joe Wiesenthal, a paper bug as you call him, the gold collapse is great news. Now he notes with great glee about how gleeful all the anti-gold people were on Twitter. And it was like a pack of hyenas very happy when on April 12th, Friday, April 12th, the markets crashed, the gold markets crashed. And he said, why is this good news? Well, gold bugs are frequently jerks, and this vindicates the economic ideas of the economic elites. So he's saying that, you know, these economic elites are trying to take care of us. And to respond to the economic crisis, economists and mainstream policymakers have favored highly unusual policy measures, massive Fed balance sheet expansion, massive stimulus, et cetera. These ideas are usually based on years of traditional economic research, Keynesianism, monetarism, et cetera. And he's saying it was gold bugs that was ruining it for the likes of these monetarists and Keynesians and all these experiments. Right. Joe Wiesenthal over there at Business Insider, along with Henry Blodgett, they worship personalities. 
uh, whether it's Bernanke or Paul Krugman, they hate markets. They hate price discovery. They hate capitalism. Notice during this Twitter crash, flash crash, gold price stayed rock solid because it has intrinsic value. Whereas Apple stock, it could be 700 one day, 400 the next day. There's no real intrinsic value of Apple. They've got a lot of cash on the balance sheet. They have a few gadgets that people like. But that could easily go to zero, like Enron goes to zero, WorldCom goes to zero. JP Morgan could easily go to zero. Whereas gold is never going to go to zero. And it performed beautifully during this controlled demolition by paper bugs like Joe Wiesenthal, a Stalinist paper bug terrorist who, who needs to be really constrained in some way because his, his propaganda is destroying the American economy. Well, it's a battle between we're in a, at a point where that system is falling apart. So it makes sense that they're trying to justify everything and look for a reason to continue to have hope in it. Uh, the gold price is it's, it's not so much intrinsic value, it's our subjective value. We're viewing it with our, our human consciousness as saying, well, there's no counterparty risk there. There's no risk of being defrauded by Lloyd Blankfein or Jamie Dimon. They're not going to be able to take it unless they come into my yard and, and dig up it out of my backyard. Well, let, so, me, let, me, let me just jump in there for a second because the average lifespan of a paper fiat currency is less than 50 years. Yeah. Going back hundreds of years, every single paper currency has become extinct. The average lifespan is less than 50 years. During that time, during that hundreds of years, during those thousands of years, nobody has ever turned down gold as money. Gold no. has always been money. Yeah. So to say whether the intrinsic value is subjective or objective or it's a debate or it's a Keynesian or it's a this school or that school, it's completely outside the main consideration here, which is that paper money has always become worthless. There's never been an exception. Gold has always been money. That's never been an exception. Okay. Now, turning back to this, his joy at the crash of gold and why it's good, it's all about perception, and he doesn't even uh, really recognize that. He says, so the collapse in gold is not about gold, but about vindication for a large corpus of belief and economic research, which has largely panned out. It's great that our economic elites know what they're talking about and have the tools at their disposal to address crises without creating some new catastrophe. Well, what Joe Wiesenthal <laughs> fails to point out is that while his paper bug brethren were crashing the paper price of gold, the price of physical mm. gold and the demand for physical gold has never been higher in history. The demand for physical gold has never been higher in history, Joe. But of course, he doesn't look at demand and supply. That would be economics. He looks at algorithms and, and, the, and the puffs of smoke that come out of the Federal Reserve System because he worships the Pope of fraud, Ben Bernanke, <laughs> because he's a Stalinist idiot. So let's look at some of what the mainstream financial media was looking at those days, those very days, April 12th, Friday, April 12th, Monday, April 15th. Let's see, and here's Joe Wiesenthal mocking anybody who thinks that there could be anything unusual happening in the, f in the gold market. Amid gold slaughter, the $1,300 and even $1,200 marks are lines in the sand. It's a slaughter, says Karsten Fritsch, senior commodity analyst at Commerce Bank. It all comes via the futures market. On Friday, more than 1,100 tons of paper gold had been traded. That is more than annual gold demand from China or India. I can't see a fundamental reason for this, to be honest. So here he is saying, this is a guy looking at it on a fundamental reason. He's never seen 1,100 tons of paper gold dumped on the market at one time. Now put that into comparison of the Washington Agreement where central banks, which hold most of the physical gold in the world, agreed to offload some of their gold, but 500 tons a year over very carefully, you know, to not impact the price. So here's in one day, uh, 1,100 tons. But remember, Joe is a dangerous, duplicitous ideologue. <laughs> Just six months ago, he was recommending that a creation of a magical $1 trillion platinum coin. <laughs> yes. If you look this up, did Joe Wiesenthal believe that you could create a magical $1 trillion platinum coin? to rectify America's deficits. This is what Joe believes. <laughs> Joe Wiesenthal's soapbox is in a very s limited area of a few uh, weird paper bugs in New York. He doesn't, no one in, around in the world and countries <laughs> elsewhere know Joe Wiesenthal from Joe uh, the, the, the weasel who is uh, terrorizing their garden. And uh, this show, however, goes out to tens of millions of people every single week in Russia, in India, in China, around the world, in America, they understand what I'm saying, that to keep buying gold to destroy Joe Wiesenthal and the banksters. 
Gold is now trading higher than the paper price, the physical price. That's all you need to know that the Joe Wiesenthal's and the Henry Blodgett's and the Ben Bernanke's and the Paul Krugman are being destroyed. Thank goodness. So then going back to this article from Market Watch where they're looking at the actual action happened live in the markets April 12th, Friday, April 12th, at Sharps Pickley, CEO Ross Norman said 3.4 million ounces of gold, or 100 tons, hit New York's market on Friday at the open. That was only the start in a shock and awe campaign that had all the hallmarks of a concerted short sale. No, it's, it triggered a buying stampede. Yeah. As we told everyone in the world that it would, and they're happily buying gold. And also miners, uh, they're not making money at gold at these levels, so they're shutting down. Oh, what's that going to do to the, to the supply of gold? I guess it reduces it. The demand is high. Let's see, high demand, lower supply. Let's see, Joe, can you figure out what would happen to the price in that case? It's called supply and demand. It's called economics. You better ask Ben Bernanke, because you can't figure that out. You're too freaking stupid to figure out what a demand and supply curve looks like. Quick, what does Paul Krugman say? I have to go to the toilet. and what, well, what do I do? Do I wipe my, do I, do I wash my hands first? Do I, I don't, I'm confused. I'm just a stupid New York idiot. Paper bug, nincompoop. Paul Krugman, help me. So Ross Norman at Sharps Pixley said that there was a concerted short sale going on. So we're going to look at what a concerted short sale, how that could possibly be used to intentionally cause the price to go down. Uh, Joe Wiesenthal says that's a conspiracy theory and it's wacky. Now we're going to turn to a little clip from a film from CBC in Canada. They did a documentary this week about the secret world of gold. And in it there was a scene with Bart Chilton. Uh, a CFTC executive where he is investigating gold and silver manipulation and this is how he explains it happens. What we've seen all too often is where you have an individual trader who has excessive concentration. And when I say excessive, I mean concentration that can lead to pushing prices around. And we've seen it in uh, precious metals, in silver, in gold, and in some of the other commodities. So Bart Shelton, a CFT, C, regulator, admits that there's concentrated positions in market manipulation, but he can't do anything about it because he's just waving his blonde hair and shaking his breasts for the TV cameras, and he's completely ineffectual as a regulator. All right, now, after the break, I'm going to be talking to Andrew McGuire about this in depth, but Stacey Herbert, thanks so much for being on the Kaiser Report. Thank you, Max. Don't go away. Andrew McGuire coming right up. In thing. Stacey. Max crash is so this season you should try some the first headline tweet from hacked AP Twitter account causes Dow to drop hundred and fifty points now we all know this was uh, the AP tweeted out that the White House there were two explosions at the White House and Obama was injured in fact it was a hack Hi, I'm Max Kaiser. Welcome to the Kaiser Report. Crash is the new black. You got your hack crashes, your gold crashes, your crash crashes. Crash is the new thing. It's the horizon called probability of 100% that this is going to blow. There is no underlying liquidity. People say derivatives add liquidity. That's a falsehood. People say market making, as iterated, by, as defined by Lloyd Blankfein or Jamie Dimon, that's a lie. These markets are nothing but a shadow of a shadow. Of AP, Twitter account, that sent this out. And then the headline from that reads, from a Twitter hack to the complete evaporation of all market liquidity in one chart. The chart here is from Nanex, and it shows the 150-point the plunge, but you see no liquidity. All right, well, that's, that's exactly right, Stacey Herbert, because these markets are essentially a hologram. They're a hologram that is concocted with algorithms that are injected into the protoplasm that is pseudo-liquidity called New York Stock Exchange and all related contingencies, markets, tangential markets, derivative markets. And uh, it's riding on the edge of an event horizon.